Hello, Dr. Maya Ken Ziegler with Ziegler Chiropractic. And the topic of conversation, I think, is a vital one. Uh, but we are talking about pain. And what recent studies are showing is that over half of adults in our country are in chronic pain. You go to any city, you put on or turn on any TV at any point during our day, and you'll see a commercial with pharmaceutical um, advertising to address pain. And so this is a major problem in our country. Of course, we've got you know, an op opioid epidemic uh, that's made national news over the last year and a half. Um, but really, when we get into understanding pain, why we get it, can better help you in your choice of healthcare and what you do day to day if you do find yourself experiencing pain. So let's dive in. Now we're gonna look at some anatomy here, uh, but I think it's kind of fun to just understand more about what's going on with your brain and your body when you're experiencing a sensation like pain. So first, let's just define it, okay? Pain is considered an electrical signal that's interpreted by the brain, okay? Your brain does not generate this signal, it's brought to the brain as a message via a wire, and that wire is what we call a nerve. So let me get my mouse here, because I want you to see. So we're gonna be right over here on this right side. So we've got this black line is considered a nerve, okay? And this nerve is signaled by a receptor, and you've got this gap here, this bridge, what's called a synapse, before it continues into the brain, this messaging. Now, <clears throat> what has been found is that the best way to approach pain and treatment of pain is through uh, polytherapy. That means you use multiple modalities to support and address pain. Now, back in 1982, I believe the, it was a Nobel Prize winner, uh, found um, a cycle um, and a hormone-like molecule that actually created pain within our body. Okay? So if we go to this area here, we see arachidonic acid. Now, this is a fat found in our body. And what happens when we eat corn or soy, okay, whether it's directly consuming corn or soy or indirectly through animal proteins who are eating grains, corn, soy, uh, but when we are exposed to that and consume that, our body makes arachidonic acid. And we see from arachidonic acid uh, a COX molecule um, or enzyme is created which creates this end um, molecule called prostaglandin E2. Now, prostaglandin E2 creates pain, okay? It makes pain. And this is where uh, NSAIDs became a big thing because, because when you take a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, it's actually stopping this um, arachidonic acid to COX to prostaglandin E2, it's stopping this cycle from happening. And so what we found, however, when we take NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories is that NSAIDs have more side effects reported to regulatory agencies globally than any other pharmacological category, okay? Side effects include damage to intestines, kidneys to liver, ears, heart. We see increased stroke risks, um, erectile dysfunction, deep vein thrombosis, atrial fibrillation, in addition to poor healing. So when it comes to how we address pain, if we can keep you from utilizing and consuming non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, it's going to be your best bet. Um, because, you know, in addition to 
you know, what I just shared with you. I mean, 30 billion over-the-counter NSAID tablets are sold annually, right? This is a big, this is big business. And we have a lot of people who are consistently taking NSAIDs on a regular basis to address pain, to address um, inflammation. I mean, these are your aspirins, your Bayer, your Excedrin, your Celebrex, your ibuprofens, Advils, Motrins, Naproxens. I mean, really, there's a laundry list of what is an NSAID, and I would encourage you to just go hit Google, type in NSAID list, and you can see how many of our over-the-counter prescriptions and foods or in, and medicines we find in our medicine cabinet, how many of these fall into this category. Uh, so that's where a different approach can be really beneficial. And that's where chiropractic comes into play. So <clears throat> let's go back to this uh, wiring or the signaling that we get uh, from the brain. Okay. And I wanna make sure that you see my mouse. I may need to keep this up here. So we go back to the brain over here, right? We have a receptor that signals uh, that there is uh, something going on in the body. There's a gap here, or gateway, before the signal makes it all the way up to the brain for it to be interpreted. Now, typically we have a receptor here that is receiving information as a result of, from inflammation. Now, <clears throat> before we go there, number one, gait theory of pain. This is all the way back from 1965. These researchers found that you can mechanically shut this door, so to speak, or shut this gap in messaging before you allow the signal to reach all the way up to the brain. And the way that you can do that is specifically through chiropractic adjustment. Now, previous to that, it was discussed exercise and movement is a great mechanical movement to hinder, reduce, or inhibit, which is this negative sign, inhibit um, you know, this signaling to the brain. You can do tissue work, massage, mobilization, uh, but what we're finding is when we look at the research, chiropractic adjustments are the most effective mechanical way to stop that signaling to the brain um, or brain to register and interpret that pain is there. Now, when we look at where those receptor sites are within the body where we can have inflammation, okay, really we're looking at three locations within the spine. Number one, we have low back. Now, with the low back, those receptor sites are actually located within the discs, right? So you have a vertebra, disc, vertebra, disc. So those discs, there's a lot of pain receptors located within the disc and that if there's inflammation and stress going on in a specific area in the lumbar spine you're going to see that receptor site come from the disc now we're talking about the neck okay where we we see that inflammation and receptor site located is in your facet joint so your facet joint is where your vertebra attach themselves to each other so you have the vertebra here and you have facets that sit like this um, to connect the spine, okay? And that's where we typically see the inflammation and pain receptor sites in the cervical spine. Now, when there's headaches, it's a different type of scenario, but we're really looking at the very upper cervical spine, your C1, C2. There um, is no disc between those. It is specific, specifically different than any other area of the spine because that's where most rotation happens in the spine. Um, so that's typically where you see the receptor sites coming from um, within your spine if you have low back pain, neck pain, headaches. Okay. Now again the chiropractic adjustment that is um, closes the door mechanically um, so that this sensation or signaling doesn't continue up to the into the brain to be interpreted. Now, outside of chiropractic adjustments, and we're gonna come back to this, okay? Um, because more recent research is showing that 
chiropractic can help how you perceive pain and your perception of your surroundings, how it relates to the sensation you experience. So we have the mechanical factor of the chiropractic adjustment. In a bit, we're gonna look at how adjustments actually change and improve our perception. So change how our brain interprets pain, which is pretty cool. Um, but we'll get back to that. So the second piece in terms of polytherapy is how can we address the inflammation? Okay, and let's go back to this arachidonic acid um, cycle that creates pain within our body when this prostaglandin E2 shows up. Now, there's an anti-inflammatory loop that takes place, and that is this one here. Okay, you have this EPA, this pink EPA that creates this P6E3. Now this is an, has an anti-inflammatory effect within the body um, and we can get this cycle when we eat wild fish. Okay? But what we found in research is that the ratio for balance within the body and for an anti-inflammatory anti-pain zone is that we should have four omega-6s Okay, we're over here, four omega-6s, which is considered arachidonic acid, to one omega-3, right? If we have a four to one ratio, then we are in the anti-pain zone. What we're finding is that the average American is a 25 to one ratio. This gives you an idea as to why every other adult in our country is suffering from chronic pain. A 25 to one is pretty substantial. We have 238 million adults in our country, half of those in chronic pain, that's 116 million people. It can give you an idea of why we're seeing these issues of chronic inflammation and where that comes from. And again, we get that with the foods that we eat. Virtually everything that we eat, if it's processed, it contains corn, uh, excuse me, corn and soy. Again, getting that directly or indirectly through our animal proteins. So <clears throat> um, there's been several, actually quite a bit of research because omega-3s have been um, one of the best documented uh, agents uh, studied and referenced in literature in terms of the, their anti-inflammatory effects. So omega-3s found in fish and pharmaceutical grade fish oils. And when looking at multiple studies, it's been found that when you take pretty significant um, dosing, but when you take 3,000 milligrams per day of omega-3s for a minimum of three months, it has better impacts and effects within your body than pain medications and over-the-counter um, medications, NSAIDs. Uh, so when you're looking at how can you address pain, the polytherapy model, you know, what we eat and consume and what we're looking at in terms of supplementation to make sure we're having the appropriate ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s to make sure we're in that anti-pain zone. Okay. We can continue into um, inflammation and supplementation. We're looking at next vitamin D. Uh, Vitamin D, you know, if you are plugged in and all to, um, you know, supplementation vital for health and recovery, um, resiliency as it relates to COVID-19, vitamin D is one of the number one uh, supplementations recommended. Majority of people are deficient in vitamin D. The risk factors are if you are, you know, north of Atlanta, if you are elderly, and if you are of dark colored skin, this increases your risk of vitamin D deficiency. And again, even those people who live in areas of, you know, a lot of sunlight year round are still deficient in vitamin D. And so when you have lower vitamin D levels, um, this can be a problem in terms of your brain's ability to interpret any type of sig signaling as it relates to inflammation and pain. So what's recommended is around 5,000 to 8,000 IUs a day. But you can actually go get your blood tested, pretty easy to do. And you want greater than 50 um, 
uh, you know, units um, within your blood, okay? That's really what you're going for. If we continue on uh, in addressing inflammation and uh, within the body. So glutamate and aspartate are considered uh, excite, exo, excitotoxins, excuse me, excitotoxins. And these are neurotransmitters that will perpetuate the signal of pain, okay? This excites pain and it makes things taste really good. Um, these are added in a lot of foods. I think sometimes Chinese food gets a bad rap um, for their MSG. MSG is considered um, a glutamate aspartate that falls into this uh, category. But if you can reduce your glutamate aspartate um, consumption or minimize it, uh, this can also support how you're feeling and address some chronic pain. Now, I'm going to recommend that you Google, um, you know, excitotoxins to get an idea of, okay, wh where can I find them? Where are they in my foods? Because this list here, you can't see it. This is a list of sources of MSG, excitotoxic food ingredients, foods high in glutamates, and it continues into you know, full second page. It's a lot of stuff on here and it's worth just Googling to see what's high in glutamate, aspartate, sources of MSG and excitotoxic food ingredients. So you can better understand, you know, the foods that you are consuming. If they have, you know, these properties that are going to keep you in pain. Now, magnesium is uh, the next recommendation. Now, in order for vitamin D to be um, activated within your body, you need magnesium. And so, often finds that vit vitamin D is, you know, for sure supplement, uh, supplementation to support health of your immune system for coronavirus treatment and care. Um, <clears throat> and a close second is magnesium just because you need to activate. Um, activate that vitamin D within your body. But magnesium, many, many effects uh, and requirements of body physiology um, need magnesium. And so depending on how much you weigh, but the standard is around 500 milligrams per day. A lot of times if you're feeling tense, tight, muscle spasming, contracting, uh, it could be indicative of magnesium deficiency because that is, um, that is one of the things that it does. Uh, you know, I talk about Epsom salt baths. Uh, Epsom salts are a great source of magnesium. Soaking in a bath allows your body to directly absorb magnesium. Um, has great impacts on digestive system. A lot of time the way to measure if you're um, getting appropriate levels of magnesium is to just keep track of your bowel movements. As soon as you get um, soft stools, you need to back up to that previous dosage uh, because magnesium will loosen your stools. Uh, leaky gut is certainly a contributor to um, pain. You know, these are lectins, which are, um, <clears throat> lectins are uh, found in plants. They are proteins that plants use to protect themselves so they can continue to, you know, grow year after year after year. Antibiotics, NSAIDs, uh, the way to approach and support the health of a gut is probiotics. Um, I usually like around 50 billion as a minimum, um, but probiotics can be really great. Laser therapy and also insulin resistance can contribute to uh, the cycle of, you know, creating prostaglandins um, and contribute to the 25 to one ratio in terms of creating an ideal environment for chronic pain to just continue. Um, <clears throat> so again, when we're looking at chiropractic adjustments, what is it doing? It's inhibiting or hindering or closing this gate, this pain gate up to the brain. Okay. When you look at anti-inflammatory options through your nutrition and lifestyle choices, it is stopping this cycle and this creation of your prostaglandin E2, which is creating pain. 
pain. Um, and again, when you look at you know, leaky gut, insulin resistance, um, that is going to, again, support overall life and well-being. Um, so we talked about mechanical ways and areas of where inflammation can take place. And when you're getting adjusted through here, how this blocks this gate. Um, in just a second, we're going to look at, okay, what's actually happening in the brain? How, the, how is the adjustment um, changing that? So before we get there, here's some alternatives to NSAIDs that are natural, um, you know, things that we get from nature uh, that can be just as powerful, again, outside of the omega-3s that we talked about. So turmeric, uh, you know, found in curry, and, you know, when we're in pain, you can do high dosing of turmeric. I often uh, recommend it in practice, sometimes up to 2,600 milligrams a day of turmeric. Boswellia, bromelain, bromelain is found in pineapple, uh, white willow bark, uh, and then green tea. All can be really great alternatives to NSAIDs. Now, <clears throat> actually, we will address this here in a second. But I want to take you to a YouTube clip. Now, I talked about how <clears throat> chiropractic adjustments aren't just addressing um, that stopping or inhibiting that gate uh, to get to the brain uh, to stop that pain signaling. It's also changing how the brain perceives your environment and perceives Pain, which is really very cool. So let's go to, let's share this screen here. I go to, so this is going to be about three or four minutes with Mr. Dr. Lorimer Mosley. And we're going to play. Eight years ago, I was walking in the bush. I had a sarong on. <laughs> Very cool. This is what happened. Did you see that? <laughs> Hang on. This is what happened. Biologically, I'm going to tell you what happened just then. Something touched the outside of my left leg in the skin. That activates receptors on the end of big, fat, myelinated, fast-conducting nerve fibres. And they stream straight up my leg, straight into my spinal cord, up to this part of my brain. And they say, you've just been touched on the outside of your left leg in the skin. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, whatever it was, is sufficiently intense to activate free nerve endings. We call them nociceptors. They're thin, unmyelinated, slow-conducting larder neva. Someone knows what a larder neva is. <laughs> nerve fibers and that message travels up to my spinal cord and it gets to my spinal cord and that's as far as it goes and it says to an, a fresh neuron in my spinal cord uh, you've just been uh, something dangerous has happened on the outside of your left leg in the skin <laughs> mate <laughs> and the spinal nociceptor takes that message up to the thalamus which sits in there somewhere and says uh, there's danger on the outside of your left leg in the skin mate <laughs> Now the brain has to evaluate how dangerous this really is. So it looks at everything. And the way that I make sense of this, of what happened to me, is the brain thought, frontal lobe, have we been ever anywhere like this before? Hang on, I'll just ask the posterior parietal cortex. <laughs> have we been in this environment before? Yes, we have. <laughs> has it happened at this stage of the gate cycle? Yes, it has. Is it coming from the same location? Yes, it is. What is it? Well, your whole life growing up, you used to scratch your legs on twigs. This is not dangerous. I'm going to give you, the organism, just something so you can kick off the twig and con continue on your merry way. And that's what happened for me. I can't show you now, but I took off my sarong, <laughs> got in the river, got out of the river, and that's the last thing I remember, uh, having been bitten by an eastern brown snake. Survivor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, for some reason, the eastern brown snake works by, by poisoning you, clearly. And one of the things that it does is activates nerve fibres. So actually, my brain would have got all these messages saying, danger, 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 danger. 
And in its wisdom, it said, no, 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 no. <laughs> Six months later, I'm walking in the bush with a boring talker. You know what a boring talker is? Those people, it doesn't matter what they say, it's boring. <laughs> That's irrelevant, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call her Naomi. Because that is her name. <laughs> anyway, this is what happened, right? And I am in agony. I have got a white hot poke of pain screaming up my leg. I'll tell you biologically what's happened. Something touched the outside of my left leg in the skin. That activates big fat myelinated nerve fibres which send a message up to here. Just me touching the outside of your left leg in the skin. It's sufficiently intense to activate these free nerve endings, danger receptors. Take the message to my spinal cord. Just been uh, something dangerous has happened on the outside of your left leg in the skin. Yes. <laughs> well done. You weren't planted. That goes to the thalamus and says the same thing. Something dangerous has just happened on the outside of your left leg in the skin. Right. So the brain says, thanks very much, thalamus. Kids are right. Good. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> frontal cortex, anything to tell me about this? Hang on, I'll ask the posterior parietal cortex. Where are we? We're walking in the bush. Oh. <laughs> You're a bit mate happy. <laughs> Uh, this stage of the gate cycle, where's it coming from? Have we been here before? Oh, yes, we have. Last time we were here, you almost died. I'm going to make this hurt so much that you can do nothing else. And I was in absolute agony for what seemed like minutes, screaming pain, until one of my mates looked at my leg, and there's a little scratch from a twig. <laughs> the pain in those situations was totally different because of meaning. I want to try and convince you that pain is an illusion 100% of the time. Here's a visual illusion. So if you have a look at this picture, you've got a square that's got A in it and a square that's got B in it. Raise your hand if you think that the square with A in it looks darker than the square with B in it. Thank goodness for that. You're, none of you have a really socially embarrassing neurological disorder, <laughs> except you. <laughs> uh, that's not true. Uh, but watch what happens if we have another look at this. These are those two squares taken out of that picture. And hopefully you can see that they're identical, and some of you may not believe me, so I'll just put A on top of that, and uh, I'll put B on top of that. And some of you may still not believe me, so why don't we just uh, move A over on top of B, or B over on top of A. No matter how long you look at this, A will look darker than B, because your brain's doing some really groovy stuff really quickly outside of okay so i love that four or five minutes of ted talk uh, because what he shares there is how your perception and how your brain interprets signaling right because we go back and and look at our definition of pain pain is just a, a signal from the body with how um, your brain interprets it, right? So our perception of life and experience is interpreted by the brain. And so if we've had really traumatic experiences, you know, pain to you versus pain to me may be very different, even if we have the same signal or same stressor. And what we're seeing is with chiropractic, Okay. It's not just about. Um, it's not just about stopping this pain uh, at this gateway or at this door into the brain, but it's also changing how your brain interprets that signaling, and that's where this is really the exciting research that came out of the Journal of Neuroplasticity. Well, and it was also. Um, in the Journal of Manipulative and Physiological Therapeutics. Following an adjustment, we see changes up to 20% of your prefrontal cortex, and your prefrontal cortex is where all executive function takes place, which is super cool. Um, studies showed a change in brain function by almost 20% on average with the prefrontal cortex uh, where higher learning and cognition happens. So what is the prefrontal cortex in charge of? 
responsible for behavior, goal-directed tasks, decision-making, memory and attention, intelligence, processing of pain, and emotional response to it. Boom, right there. So not only can chiropractic adjustments actually stop and put a door on that gateway of pain, so mechanically change that signaling, but it can also change how your brain interprets the signaling from the body. Processing of pain and your emotional response to it. In addition to autonomic function, motor control, eye movements, and spatial awareness. That's pretty dang cool. Um, and it's not even a conscious thought that we need to have. Oh yeah, we want our body to better address X, Y, Z. It just happens. Every time you're getting adjusted, you're improving pre prefrontal cortex function, your brain's ability to process your environment and become more resilient and adaptable. Which brings me to you know, this slide here. This is called the wellness scale. And I want you just to, I mean, this is 100% function up at the top, 0% at the bottom. 100% life, zero is death and what's in between. You look at this, this yellow box here. This yellow box is a danger state because there is no symptoms. This is what most people consider to be health, simply the absence of symptoms. It's not until we get into pain, isn't when we get into, you know, this lower area of disease and dysfunction. This is, you know, if you're talking about just living a life pain-free, this is where you're living. So I'd look at what's your energy level look like? Are you required to be taking coffee or sugar or something to keep your energy up during the day? How's your sleep? Are you able to focus? You know, are you um, taking NSAIDs or over the counters infrequently? Um, we are in this state long enough and we slowly digress to more serious conditions. And so my challenge to you is how can you look at health differently and look at functioning more towards 100% cell function where body is running perfectly? And these are pretty great states, right? Pretty great states to be, you know, a person doesn't get sick often, if at all, but recovers if they do get sick, right? Cells replace themselves with healthy new cells. That's where we want you to be. And so when you choose chiropractic and you choose chiropractic long term, right? It's really great, really great to, sh to shut that, you know, that door on that gateway to the brain to stop the signaling. It's really great for your brain to better interpret that signaling and your emotional response to it. But when you are consistently taking care of your health and making choices, and putting yourself into this spectrum and this area, this is health, this is vitality, this is life, and this is a different experience. Um, so I will challenge you as we talk about pain, it does feel good to feel good, but there's so much more to health than just pain, okay? And we go back to, the nutrition and the anti-inflammatory effects they all have when you're taking vitamin D, omega-3s, magnesium, when you're choosing foods that uh, don't have MSG or glutamate or aspartate. Those are choices that will put you and move you towards a higher function. Um, and that's what we want for you. But it takes work. So um, my challenge to you is Pain is not normal, it's common. I think we can understand that by how many NSAIDs are taken, um, you know, on an annual basis. And the fact that, you know, it is the most reported to our regulatory agencies globally. There's a lot of people on NSAIDs, there's a lot of people in pain. It's not normal, but it is common. Normal is 100% function, is a healthy body. Pain is also your body's way of telling you there is something wrong and not to ignore it. NSAIDs, they dull the pain, they get rid of the pain, but it doesn't change that that signaling is happening. Your body's telling you something. And our job in chiropractic is to determine what is that something. So if your definition of health is based on how you're feeling, you're missing out on so much. So I am going to challenge you if you've never been to a chiropractor or if you have not had your spine checked to get your spine checked. 
because there are so many other measurements that we can evaluate in terms of how your body functions, not just based on how you feel. Uh, so many more that can help lead you down a healthier road as opposed to waiting till you're in those uh, lower states. So I hope you learn some things about pain, have a better understanding of you know, what happens in your body when you choose more anti-inflammatory foods, uh, when you choose to get your chiropractic care and be consistent with it, or just have a better understanding of where pain comes from. Because uh, it's just a signal, it's just a message, and that's how your brain's interpreting it. And the question is, why is it there, right? Not ignoring it. So love and appreciate you, Dr. Mike and Ziegler Chiropractic, and I will see you next time. Bye.